You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Hey Star Wars fans, welcome to another Black Series action figure review. We're looking at the last one from the Acolyte. For whatever reason, this one has just been delayed by like an extra month. Um, but still, better late than never. <laughs> it's it's cool. Uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to May um, in her assassin outfit, basically mostly from the first episode, um, first two episodes. I think she had a little bit of an out outfit swap after that, uh, from memory. Um, yeah, I've been actually looking forward to this one. The OSHA figure was actually quite good. And, you know, say what you will about the series. Um, some of these Acolyte figures have actually been really, really good quality. Um, in terms of, you know, accessories, look, paint applications, all of that. They're definitely um, contenders for my top ten this year. Um, it's going to be hard to hard to pick this year, I think, when it gets down to the end, end of the run of end of 2024. Um but yeah, she's number six, so the sixth figure from the line. We do have a couple more coming out that have been announced. We're getting Basil and Vanessa Rowe, which I'm excited about. They should be out early next year, early 2025. So yeah, number six, there is a little bio on the back. Big props to the actress Amanda Stenberg. I think she did a fantastic job in both of these roles as as the sisters may and Osha. It's really good. But um, yeah, I'm excited to crack this one open and take a look. So let's do that. All right, folks, here is May. This is pro probably my most anticipated one of the lot, to be honest. Um, you know, Osha was a great figure. All the Jedi were fantastic. Um, but just as a point of sort of separation, these, these, these figures, this one was, um, you know, as being sort of at the start, it was, she was the main antagonist. Um, yeah, sort of came probably my most sought after one of the lot. Um, I think, uh, you know, accessory wise, looks really nice too. She does come with the mask. We're going to take a look at how that goes on afterwards. It looks like we're going to have to do a little head of the pop of the head. Um, there's no real, there's no sort of, just sort of easy wrap around. Um, and she comes with four of these tiny little, I can't think of the name, Kunai. That's the name of the knives, I believe. That's the sort of traditional Japanese name for those knives. Yeah, very, very small. I do believe there is a space on the figure for them. So um, if you're worried about losing these, because they are they are very small, um, yeah, you might want to just tuck them away in an accessory container or something like that. Um, but yeah, here's the figure. Now, um, I did bring... Osha down here just to do a little bit of a comparison. I thought, I wonder how much they use of the head sculpt. Um, and for the face sculpt is, itself, they've, it's, a, it's a no brainer they've used the same thing, but the way they've um, applied different paint applications to the to May's face to Osha's makes them look completely different. And the hair, the hair piece is actually extremely different too. Um, despite having very similar sort of hairstyles, um, you know, they are individual pieces as defined by the uh, the longer braids on the back, whereas Osha only has the short braids. Um, up until May gives herself the the lightsaber haircut, which, you know, as a hairdresser myself, it's, it is, it's a dream to um, actually be able to just cut someone's hair with a lightsaber. Um, <laughs> it would be fantastic. It would be really, really cool to do that. Um, but yeah, just as a little point of difference, I think, you know, the way they've differentiated the two characters just with some, you know, some nice sort of paint applications through the faces, I think they're just sort of really, really nicely done. But yeah, I have no reason to believe that the sculpts are, the sculpts are separate on the head sculpt. I, I you know, trying to look at it through a, through a blank, as a blank canvas, I don't think they are any different just clever paint work. But we're going to take a look at May because this is the figure we're looking at. Um, really love the soft goods on this one. This The hood and sort of, I don't know, it just fits. It sits so nicely. The way they've stitched the hood, you know, it just sort of sits over the head just beautifully. You know, just the way it sort of 
It's none of this sort of sticky uppy stuff. The way it's sort of stitched down over the shoulders, the way the hood sort of falls down the back. They've really, they've really worked that out. I think recently with with soft goods and hoods. Um, yeah, some of them recently have been really, really well done. So, so yeah, if you want to class that as an accessory, you can actually remove that. So yeah, we'll get just get a look at the paint applications. As like I said, the face really nicely done. It's got that sort of stoic look about her. You can sort of see there is the little collar under there that's it's its own piece. So I wonder if that's the mask that's uh, that's sort of wrapped up. We'll take that off in a minute and have a look. But yeah, I like the sort of the chest armor that looks nice. You know, sort of the chain link, chain link sort of mesh over the shoulders there. It's really nicely sculpted. It's even in those sort of the shoulder part joints there. You can go sort of into, yeah, just in that, what would otherwise be sort of hidden in the butterfly joint there. You can sort of see they've, they've sculpted in some of that sort of chainmail look, which really, really nicely, nice attention to detail. And even like the metallic sort of worn beaten metal sort of plate there over the chest. That looks good. Yeah, more of that sort of chain link mail coming down the coming down the inner sort of part of the skirt there as well as you know just the nice the nice sort of warm warm ready color to this part it's really good so there we have it there's a little sheath for her knives we had a, I'm just going to tuck one in there just to have a look so they kind of just yeah kind of just sit tuck it in there but they will hold. So once you're once they're in there, you can sort of cover them over, and that's and that's good. Um, so that that's cool. I like that. That's really really nice. Yeah, I haven't actually seen any reviews of this figure myself yet. It's sort of just you know, it's not a spoiler thing, but you know, you definitely like to check these things out and work them out in the first time. So there we go. Nice down the back. So the boots, yeah, I really like that bit there. That's actually a separate bit. It's not molded onto the leg. That's sort of the knife pouch. So that's really good. Love that. But sort of, the sort of sculpt of the leg, so it sort of sits in there. There's a couple of little grooves. I'm just trying to get the camera to focus. There's sort of some grooves there. So it does sort of find that place and sits in there nicely. Yeah, like the sort of the wraps around the arms, the forearms there looks good. The one thing they did really well in the acolyte was the uh, was the costumes. I think they just the outfits were fantastic. So let's see if we can pop off that head nice and easily. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's not too bad at all. So yeah, that's exactly what that is. That's the the sort of mask as if it's wrapped up. So yeah, but the, yeah, once that's so, let's pop this one on there, and we'll pop the head on and see how that sort of sits. Bear with me. So yeah, once you get that head sort of popped on. We sort of sit on there. It sits okay. I mean, that's not great, but <laughs> you sort of, once you get it in the right spot, it kind of looks cool. Well, I dig that. It's you know, sort of stealth assassin kind of look. I actually think there might be enough room to be able to just leave that part on the figure as well. So I'm gonna. I'm actually going to try that. Bear with me. So as you can sort of see there, I've left that first little collar piece on. It sort of just sits inside of that, so you don't have to worry about sw switching and swapping. You can just 
put that on and pop, I'm assuming once the head goes on that will actually stop that from sort of slipping up so much. Bingo bango, I think that's done it, look at that. It still, it might get a little bit of wriggle, but you know, that's, I, I dare say that's how it's designed. I've just, it's just taken me that to work it out. That's cool, I'm liking it. I still, I still think I'm gonna take that off and leave it off, I think, you know, the head sculpt looks good without it. But um, yeah, let's, let's get that back on and get the hood up. Yeah, no, I do, I do, I really dig that look. And I've seen people the way they've uh, sort of had her, because, you know, the hands are too small for her to sort of hold the, where are they? You know what? <laughs> Eating my words as I go. The hands are sort of sculpted. I thought they'd be too small. I thought the knives would be too small to be able to hold like that. But alas, I am. Um, I have been proven wrong. They're just sort of sculpted nicely. That there's just a slight little groove in the in the hand there. I don't know if you can see, but it's just enough room that you can get. Let's see if I can get one upside down. Oh man, that works. They're not going anywhere. That's a nice firm grip in the hand there. That's good. So then we can get this fourth one and stick that in the uh, sheath, I guess. Get them, and she's armed. Yeah, okay. I'm very, very impressed with this figure. Just some of those design elements, like the hands. I thought, you know, if they just reuse hands from another figure, those little swords, little knives aren't going to fit. I've seen people sort of tuck them in the fingers. Which definitely works, but the fact that they can, um, you know, sit in there like that, really, really good. All right, so, yeah, articulation-wise, you've got the ball joint in the head, ball joint in the neck, ball hinges in the shoulders, got the butterfly joints in the arms too, as we've seen. It's got ball hinges in the elbows, great range of movement. She's got a torso joint. She has the, the ball and socket in the thighs, in the hips. Swivels at the thighs. Or is there? There's definitely a separation there. No. No join in the thighs. So just the ball in the hips. We have the ball hinge in the knees. We have the ball hinge in the ankles. And then you get the rocket joint as well. So very nicely articulated. Let's try... Her on the Kessel Run stand here. So it's a nice, definitely a nice snug, snug fit on the larger peg from, designed for sort of black series. There we go. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Really nice. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with this figure of May. Um, yeah, well wait, worth waiting for. Probably my favourite from from the Acolyte wave of figures. Osha was great too. But uh, yeah, really nice stuff. Really nice to have these two together again. And, uh, yeah, eagerly awaiting more, more acolyte figures. I mean, I think I mentioned we're getting, we're getting Basil with Venestra and um, Pipeline. We were also getting Kel Naka. So, I mean, I hope you know with the, with them deciding not to continue on with the acolyte series. I hope that doesn't mean we're gonna just see an end to the figures. But we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Well, let me know what you thought down below drop a comment be great greatly appreciated and uh, we'll catch up with you very soon till then may the force be with you always we would be honored if you would join us